Praise, O oh servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord is worthy to be praised. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. And we welcome you to this broadcast of the First Baptist Church of Hicks Edition. We're so glad that you're here joining with us today here in the sanctuary and on Facebook Live and on Zoom. So we're glad to have you on this first Sunday morning of March. Amen. Let us recite our purpose statement. In just a few moments, our praise team will come and give us our selections for the morning. Our purpose, our purpose is to share the love of Christ, to be dedicated and service to others, to be disciplined in giving, responsible in stewardship, true in worship, faithful in prayer, and passionate in the study of God's word. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father God, we come to you this morning thanking you and praising you for who you are. You reign. You reign in our lives. You reign all around us, Lord. And we give you glory and honor, Father. We thank you Father, for the praise team this morning, we thank you, Father, for them continuing to put us in a place of worship, a place of worship and praise unto your name. We thank you, God, because you are so good and so wonderful. We ask you this morning that you would just be with us this morning, that you will be in these services this morning, Father. We're so humbled by you, by your power, by your presence by your preparation, even for me. I thank you, Lord, for what you are going to say even this morning, Lord. It is not by my power, by my might, but it's by your abilities, Lord. And so I thank you, Father, for what all you have given all of us, Lord, and how you are blessing us, Lord. We ask that you speak this morning in a powerful way that somebody might Say, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be better? What must I do to give glory and honor to God? Let us all get better because you're continuing to support us, Father. And so we ask that you continue to be with us as we continue to praise and, and magnify your name. We ask this prayer in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We do pray. Amen. Amen. Please turn with me to Genesis, the 37th chapter. Genesis, the 37th chapter. I'll begin reading from the first verse. Pastor Finley did a, such a great job with a story about Jacob. So I want to deal with his son and continue to go from this great love story that we've heard from him in the last month. So let us talk about Joseph. Genesis 37 chapter, I begin reading from the first verse as it reads. Now J Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Cana. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bila and the sons of Zepha, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheep stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? 
or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars have bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I, your brothers indeed, come to bow down to earth before you? And this his brothers envied him. But his father kept the matter in mind. May God add a blessed reading and the hearing of his word. I give title uh, to this word that I give you today. Wearing what your father gave you. Wearing what your father gave you. You may be seated. A dream for God. Many years ago, a young man had a dream of telling the story of Jesus everywhere in the world when he is suggested taking that good news to people. An old man said, sit down, young man. If God wants to save the heathen, he'll do it without your help or mine. This young man, William Carey, was a cobbler as he worked day after day making shoes and he thought about this exciting dream of his. He preached a sermon, attempt great things for God, expect great things from God. Because he believed this with all of his heart, he left his own country, England, and went to India. There he spent the rest of his life teaching and preaching about Jesus, who said, go into all of the world and tell the good news. It was several years before even one person accepted this message. But one, and then another, and then many believed the good news of Jesus until thousands upon thousands came to know Jesus. All because a young man with a dream opened a door. Keep your mind open to what God wants to say to you. Have dreams, have passions about what God wants to do through you. This 17-year-old man had a dream, and God wanted to use him. And so God wants to use you as well. But you've got to have dreams, and you've got to be able to be open to what God has for you. There is a history behind this tunic, behind this coat. This 17-year-old kid is wearing. God told Abram in Genesis 12 and 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. There is history behind greatness. Sometimes some of us can't even accept being great. <laughs> we don't even see ourselves as far as God using us in the sense of greatness, of us doing some great things, some mighty and some powerful things in our lives. But Abram, Abraham, he allowed this greatness to flow through him. God says, I'm going to make your name great, but in the end, he says, and you shall be a blessing. So we have to let that blessing flow through us. God gives you some money, be a blessing to someone else. God has given us gifts. Now we've got to allow those gifts to flow through us and be a blessing. That's when we're able to do great things and what God gives us. To Isaac in Genesis 26 and 4, I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. God is working through Abram, that now is working through his son Isaac. This blessing had to flow, and now his, his uh, descendants are going to multiply through him. 
Jacob, he fights for his blessing of greatness. In Genesis 32 and 26, it says, and he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and prevailed. Jacob is fighting for his blessings. Sometimes we got to fight for our blessings. Sometimes we don't even, we just sit by, we just sometimes just come to the place that we're all right with the circumstance. But sometimes you just got to fight for what God has for you. If you don't fight for it, you're not going to get what God has for you. So you have to fight for it. And then Joseph, as a 17-year-old kid, was born out of love. Jacob loved Rachel. We heard that story this last month. Jacob loved Rachel. He had a great love for this wife. It, it took him. He had to fight for it as well. He had to fight for that woman. I mean, and it was a tough fight. It was a tough fight between Laban and between uh, Leah. And, you know, it was just, it was a tough fight. But he was a fighter. And sometimes you got to fight for what God has for you. You just sit by, then you're not going to get what God has for you. But God had a great woman for, for Jacob. I say I fight for my wife, but I'm, I'm a weak guy. I'm, I really am. I'm a, I'm a weak guy. I, I just have to be honest. I mean, you know, God gives us things. God gives us great things. And sometimes we don't even realize what God gave us in the beginning. Jacob understood what God had given him, or, or I'm sorry, Joseph understood what his father had given him. He understood it. He understood it from the beginning of what God had given him. And he knew the path of where this is going to take him because he understood the story. So there began to be some contention and envy between uh, Leah and Rachel. Because when they were both barren, and not able to have children for Jacob, and they both sent in their mates, Bela and Zelpha, into Jacob to produce children. And if you read in the scripture, you see that, that they talk about those two. Because those are the brothers that are out here when, when Joseph is telling them the dream. You know the boys that were born out of contention and envy? You know, them people that we deal with every day, they got contention and envy in our lives. You know, when we try to tell them a dream that they got a problem with everything that we say, and they got a problem, but they ain't even out there working. Because he sends back a report that they ain't even doing nothing. You know them church members that, oh boy, I'm getting ready to go now. You know them church members that ain't doing nothing, they just talking about stuff, but ain't doing nothing. They talk about you coming to church and living for the Lord, but they got something to say all the time. But they ain't doing nothing. You know them, 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 yeah, them, them that was born out of envy and contention. But here is Joseph that is born out of love. Out of love. What have you been born out of? So this 17-year-old Joseph, born out of love, is out in the field with his half-brothers, born out of contention. And Joseph's father, Jacob, made him a coat of many colors that symbolizes God's greatness, God's favor, and God's blessing. God has given us a coat of love. I'm going to need you to put this coat on this morning. You, you got to put this on. You got to put this coat that God, you got to put this favor that God has given you, this blessing that God has given you, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're wearing something, when you really feel good about what you're wearing and it's got, you got the right colors and they matching and everything, you know how it is when you come to church and when, when God has really blessed you, you know, and when you know you're being blessed, you know, brothers, y'all pimping, ladies, y'all got that swag, you know, and you know when you got it, you know when you got it, and that's what Joseph is doing. He's going out there in the field and he got it. He wearing his coat. He out there just prancing in his coat, you know. And his brothers, they mad and upset at him because he got the coat. He got the coat. So they mad. 
So I want to talk about three things. The coat. I'm going to talk about what comes with the coat. And then when we talk about the what comes for the payoff of the coat. Because it's going to pay off in the end. It's going to pay off in the end. But you've got to put the coat on and keep the coat on. The coat. There are many colors and aspects of our life in what your father has given you. Your health, your family and friends, your career, your finances, your community, your church, your personality, your gifts and talents and ministry. God's given you a lot, and there's a lot of colors in you. Even within your personality, God gave you that. Now, wear it for God. God's giving you your health and strength. Now wear it. God's giving you a career. Now wear it. God's giving you finances. Now wear it. God's giving you a lot of things, and you've got to really, truly wear it. Sometimes those come with some difficulties. I know. I understand. But I'm saying wear it. I know we're not all the healthiest people in the world sometimes. That's what God gave you. I know that's hard. Sometimes it's hard to wear what God gave you. It's hard sometimes when people act a fool with you, and, and, and I'm telling you to, to wear forgiveness. Preacher, preacher says, wear it. I can't wear this. This is hard. This is hard to wear. But God then gave it to you. Now you got to wear it. Envious people that come along. We got some church members like that, too. And, but we got to wear it. We got to wear it irregardless because there is something going to pay off in the end. Our Father has designed a coat of greatness just for you. The coat or mantle is shown in Scripture as a symbol of the covering and the protection of the Holy Spirit. And so we have to wear this and continue to wear it. This covering of the Holy Spirit is found in Acts 2 and 17. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit of all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. There is no new revelations from God. But he does give you a covering of the Holy Spirit to make things clearer. What, what God has done when he gives uh, prophets, there's not a new revelation, but God gives prophets, preachers, to make things clearer. What God does for us in the fact that he's telling us about these dreams and, his, and these visions, he's saying, look in prospective, look in forward motion, because there is something coming. But also, he tells us, the old men, look in retrospect. L look at where God has brought us. Look at how God has been so good to us. Look at how he has taken care of us and protected us. In the midst of all of those troubles, yet and still, he took care of us. You got to dream dreams, everything God has done in the past and how good he has been to us. <clears throat> and so that is the spirit that Joseph has to understand. So Joseph is out there in the fields trying to make clearly understanding the meaning of this coat. And he tells them a dream because obviously they didn't understand the coat. And they tripping about how you got the favor of God on you. They tripping about how God has blessed you. They looking at how God is so good to you. So they sitting out there tripping on you because you out there walking just looking good, but they tripping on you. So they can't understand. They can't understand what God is doing for you in your life. So in Genesis 37 and 7, it says, There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and stood upright. And indeed, your sheep stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. So then, in verse 8, in the NIV version, 
And I don't think y'all got this version. Y'all don't. Y'all, y'all got an NIV? Anybody got an NIV? Okay, well, in my NIV, this is what it says. In the Negro International Version, <laughs> his brother said to him, Negro, please, what do you think you are? You, you, you know, when we come with all of that, you know, about how good God is to us and everything, that's a version. <laughs> Who do you think you are? And we finna bow down to you? So that didn't go over well. So then, G, so then Joseph, he has another dream. Now they're already mad at him. <laughs> Coming with all these dreams and stuff. And then he got another dream. And I'm saying, Joseph, shut up, shut up. Don't tell him your dream. You, you're starting too much. And, and, and so Joseph, he said, and this time, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. And so in the NIV, it says, his brother said to him, we're about to bust you dead in your throat. I mean, you know, they mad. <laughs> because they've been born out of what? Contention and strife and envy. So what comes with the coat? What comes with the coat? There's a lot that comes with this coat for Joseph. Let's look at what had Joseph had to go through. Joseph was instructed to go check on his brothers and the flock. Before he gets there, they see him coming, and they said, "Uh, here comes the dreamer. And they began to conspire to kill him. So they don't kill him, but they rip off the coat of many colors. Now stop there, because I thought, what is Joseph doing out here with the flock and he got the coat on? He still got the coat on. But you know what? I believe this is what Joseph, because he's wearing it all the time. Joseph sent the coat off to the cleaners every day because he's still wearing the coat. He had to have. He had to clean the coat constantly, keep cleaning the coat. He, he, it wasn't dirty because this is a special coat. We have to keep our message clean. We have to keep our witness clean. We have to keep cleaning it all the time. Uh, it's what we're wearing. It's what we're wearing. It's what people see. It's what people, how people are perceiving you. How are people smelling what you're coming and you're stepping in? How are they seeing this? So we have to constantly clean it, clean it, clean it. Because when they come and you come and they say, here comes the dreamer again. At least they see a clean coat. They see a holy God in their midst because that's what they got to really see is to see the Lord so he has his coat on they tell they rip it off of him they put him in the pit and they sell him to the uh, uh, Midianites and the Midianites end up selling him to Potiphar so even though he does not have the coat God has not left him You got to hear that if you heard anything. God has not left him. No matter what you go through, no matter what somebody takes from you, no matter what the devil steals from you, God has not left you. God has not left you. Your father has given something to you, and it's special. And it's not in just the coat alone, but it's in the fact. Of Joseph understanding what this code is all about. So then he finds himself trapped in an abusive situation with Potiphar's wife. Now it's time to get out of there. It's an abusive situation, so he's got to get out. And that's just what comes with the code sometimes. It's difficult sometimes. So Potiphar had him put in prison, but God is still with him. 
While in prison, Joseph is wearing what God gave him, the ability to interpret dreams. So when we get to some of these places, we've got to be able to give what God has given to us. And so here, Joseph has a gift now. And so he's wearing what God has given him. It was not in the coat, but it was what God had given him. And God had given him great abilities. God has given us great abilities. And we've got to be able to wear it. I thank the praise team this morning because God has gifted them. And they wore it this morning. They wore that thing, what God had given them. And that's what God wants us to do, to be able to give what God has given to us. And whatever it, because what this code is all about is clarity, that we can give clarity. When, when we, we give our gifts, it's to give clarity to the word of God. So it, no matter what you do within the church circle, whatever you do out in the world, it is to give clarity to the word of God. So when, when you wear that, that's what that's about. It's for you to give clarity to God's word. So after two years in prison, he is put in the right place at the right time. And he interprets dreams for Pharaoh that allows him to get ready for a seven-year seven, seven year famine. God will do that for us. Put us in the right place at the right time. And that's all you got to do is just keep wearing the coat. Keep wearing the coat. It's going it's to come a time for you. I know it's difficult sometimes, but just keep wearing the coat. So let us look at what you had to go through. The enemy has conspired to steal, kill, and destroy you. The enemy is always saying, here comes that dreamer again. You may have gotten trapped in an abusive situation, but there is a testimony on the other side of that. There is a testimony in your life. No matter what type of abusive situation that you found yourself in, and you did just like Joseph, you ran with everything, whatever was on your back, just run with it. Let him have whatever, but Joseph took off. And so that's a testimony on the back end of everything God would have done for you. So whatever it is, you've gone through it and made it. You may have been put in a, in a COVID prison, cell 19. <clears throat> We've all been put in a COVID prison. <laughs> so, so what do we do? What do we do in this COVID-19 prison that we in? We need to start using our gifts. We need to do, start using what God has given us. Here we are using Zoom. Here we are using Facebook. We're using what God has given us. And we're doing our best ability to wear it. And so that's what you've got to do. Be able to wear what God has given you. And whatever he gives you, wear it well. And so that's what we do while we're in this prison. Because while Joseph was in the prison... He was capable of interpreting the dreams, and he used what God gave him. And then God, God elevated. God will elevate you, even while you're in that prison. God's going to elevate us. God's going to elevate us if we do not take the coat off. We got to wear what God has given us, and so we got to keep on wearing it. Now here I am in my third point. When wearing the coat pays off. It takes strength to wear the coat. It's not easy sometimes. But Joseph had enough strength to see the payoff from the beginning. He had enough strength to see the payoff from the beginning. Let me say that again. He had enough strength to see the payoff from the beginning. Oh, y'all still didn't get it. He had enough strength to see the payoff from the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. Let me go on. Toward the end of Joseph's life, he says these words to his brothers. In Genesis 50 and 19. 
do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about as it is this day to save many a people of lives. What the devil meant for evil on your life, God meant it for good. But he had enough strength to see from the beginning what God was going to do in the end and what the payoff is. There is great payoff in what we do. But we've got to be able to keep that coat on. Keep that Holy Spirit on our life. Our church vision says, First Baptist will be a church community within the local community, ministering the whole gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole person. So I reached out to Pastor Finley, and I asked him, I said, well, Give me in a nutshell what that is saying. And this is what he said. He says, in short, when the church is strengthened by the gospel, the whole community is strengthened. So we've got to gain strength here because we're going to be able to strengthen the whole community. And so we come here and we use what God gave us to strengthen others. So what God has given me, he gave me some troubles <laughs> just so that I could strengthen somebody else. See, I remember this little old Mustang I used to drive. And my wife just said, huh, she remembered it. little Mustang, in order to keep the seat up, I had to put a brick in the back <laughs> of the seat. And every now and then, while riding down the road, the brick would slip out. <laughs> Why are you holding the steering wheel and keep driving? I tell you that story to clarify what God has brought you through. Mm. It's just to clarify how good God is. It's just to clarify where God will take you to. But you just got to keep on the coat. It's, there's a payoff in the end if you just keep the coat on. God will take care of you. God will protect you. See, for Joseph, when, when, when they brought the, the coat and they had put him in the pit and they had put him down in the pit and then they put blood all over it and they was to say, look, taking it back to the father and they said, well, look here, the son, is he's dead. And I can already see Jacob as he looks at the coat. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's the coat, all right. This is the coat, coat of protection. Holy Spirit is in this coat. How did the coat make it back? But Joseph didn't make it back. You know, some of you, you've gone through something and you have loved ones that have died and you're saying to yourself, hmm, I know that boy was a saved. I know it. I know it. But how did God take him from me? There's going to come a day. He's protected. God has protected him. Ain't nobody took nothing from you. Ain't nobody took nothing away from you. Because at the end of the story, we see Joseph coming back to his father. After all that God had done for him. There he is. There he is. So why are you thinking that I've gone through so much and I've gone through my life? We've gone through a pandemic. We've gone through so much. We've gone through so much racism and so much hatred with the people that have been born out of contention and envy. We've gone through so much. But where this love that God has put around you, where this love that God has put around you, because God loves you, God has favor for you. 
He won't let you go. He won't let you go. He won't let you go. Because there is a day coming. There is a story about a pando tree. Pando tree is found in central Utah. It is the oldest known organism on earth. They are said to be some 80,000 year old, this tree. The name Pando means I spread. This one tree is over 100 acres large. It has many sprouts of trees, but it is connected to one root system. Therefore, it is one tree. We're one tree. We're one tree. And we're all connected as one. So I say that when I say about strengthening one another and how we're going to strengthen one another. That tree, they say that it's some 80,000 years old. I'd love to see that tree. Some 80,000 years old and it's dying. The church is an old church, <laughs> and it's dying. And they can't figure out why it's dying. We got researchers now trying to research the, tr the church. Why is it dying? Because we're not wearing the coat. We're, we're taking the coat off. I get to work, I'm taking this coat off because it's uncomfortable. This gospel is uncomfortable, and I don't want to share it. I don't want to do what this what this tree's name is. I spread. I don't want to spread this message because it's uncomfortable. I don't want to tell nobody about Jesus because it's uncomfortable. I, I, I don't want to, you know, forgive nobody because it's uncomfortable. I, I want to take this coat off. I'm uncomfortable with who I am. I'm uncomfortable by sharing this gospel as I stand here today. There was a time that I was uncomfortable being here because I didn't want to wear it. I didn't want to wear what God gave me. But you've got to wear what God has given you. I spread. We've got to spread this gospel. We've got to spread this gospel. There is a vision that had been given even to Pastor Finley. There was a vision that was given to Pastor Woodbury. This vision is what comes to the end. You've got to be able to see from the beginning the payoff in the end. That's really what it's all about, that we, that we put this on because we're going to see a payoff in the end. But are you willing to wait for the end? Are you willing to wait all the way to the end? So let us hear from a couple of people that will tell us about the coat will pay off. Come here, Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I just see the, the eagle just sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. God's going to finally bring some strength and your wings are going to be able to fly but you got to wait on the Lord until God gives you the strength come here Jeremiah 1 and 5 before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation God seen you before you were even born. He's seen the process toward the end of where God is going to take you. <clears throat> Come here, Paul. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Paul wants to say something else in Romans 8 and 37 through 39. 
Now in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor heights nor depths nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. You gotta wear the coat. Nothing's gonna separate me from this coat. Nothing's gonna separate me from this covering, from this protection God has given to me. Nothing's gonna separate me from the love of God. One last one. Come here, Jesus. Tell them about this cross that you're wearing. It had to have been a difficult coat that he was wearing. Jesus just want to tell you about the coat that he had to wear, that his father gave him. His God, father gave him a difficult coat to wear. His coat had nails in his hands. His coat had a, a spear in his side that he had to wear. His coat, I'm sure, was difficult to wear. It was a little tight for him to wear. But he wore it anyways. He wore that coat for you and for me. He wore that coat. Yeah, he wore the coat that they spit on him. Yeah, they striped him at the back. Yeah, they put him down all the time. But he wore the coat anyways. And he had to keep the coat on for three days and three nights. But he kept the coat on. He kept it on for you and for me. But it was about the end of the story. Yeah, he kept the coat on because in the end, he rose from the dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to be able to see the end of the story when you start at the beginning. Joseph was able to see what this coat was in the beginning. And you got to see what God has given you in the beginning and keep on wearing it to the end because God has something in store for you you just don't take that coat off. Don't take his love off. Don't take that grace off. God is so good that he has continued to provide for us. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Our Father God, we thank you, Lord, <clears throat> for your word. We thank you, Lord, for what you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for these, your people that you have given to us. And we only pray, Lord, for them. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless them, continue to strengthen them, Lord, as they continue to, to wear what you've given them. I don't know what all you've given them. You Sometimes you've given them some difficulties, Lord, in their lives. Sometimes you've given them so much blessings in their lives, Father. But I'm asking you, Lord, that you would just strengthen them in whatever endeavor they may go through, Lord clarify this word to their hearts, Lord, that it be clear, Lord, even what Jesus did for us in wearing the coat for us. And I ask you, Lord, that you would provide strength to them, Lord, as they continue to give your life glory and honor. I ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and thank you, Reverend Bell, for that message that you have shared with us about wearing, wearing our coat. I do want to just take a few moments just to extend an invitation to you who may be in the sanctuary or watching on Facebook Live or on Zoom, that if you have never confessed Christ as Lord, if you have never asked him into your heart to be saved, now is a good time to do it. Understand that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's how much God loves you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what other people think about you. It doesn't matter if anybody else loves you. God loves you. The creator loves you. And he loved you so much that he shared his son with us. And he died for us that we might have eternal life. Listen, we're not perfect. None of us are. And you can't live your life thinking that you can reach perfection without Christ. There's no way you can do it.
But God demonstrated his love towards us that even while we were yet in our imperfection, even while we were yet sinners, he still died. And all he wants us to do is to come just as we are. Listen, he loves you so much. He doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want you to stay in your sin. The Bible declares if you just want to live without Christ, the wages of living in sin will be death. Oh, but thank God, again, that he loved us so much that he gave us his son as a gift for eternal life. How do I get to know him? The Bible declares in Romans 10 and 9, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so if you've never confessed to hope in Christ, in just a few moments, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask you to say a simple prayer with me to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. There may be others who actually have confessed Christ as Lord, but somehow life and the cares of the world has sidetracked you, has moved you away from relationship and fellowship with Christ. And today you've heard this message from Reverend Bell that we need to understand God has gifted us with a coat of love. And he wants you to wear that coat wherever you go. As a matter of fact, if you've taken your coat off, he still has it reserved for you. All you need to do is just come back to him. Rededicate, recommit your life back to Christ today. There may be someone listening today who doesn't have a church home, who doesn't have a pastor who prays for them, doesn't have a church that they can fellowship and have family with. We invite you to become a member of First Baptist Church. At the end of our service today, you'll see how you can reach us for membership. We want you to be blessed today. So let us go to God in prayer. God, thank you so much again for the word that you have shared with us. Again, there may be someone listening today here in the sanctuary or on Facebook or on Zoom who has never confessed Jesus Christ as Lord. All I ask them to do is say this simple prayer, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord today. And we know, God, if they prayed that simple prayer, and they prayed it with sincerity as they reached out to you, we know that even now they are saved. We thank you for that salvation. Again, Lord, we pray for those who may have, have turned, turned their backs on you, God, but now they want to return home. We pray, God, that you would open up your arms and receive them with joy and restore unto them the joy of their salvation. God, we pray that you would bless every listener today, every hearer today, that you would give them hope if they've lost hope, give them courage if they've lost courage, God, and strengthen them for the days to come. We know that you're able, God, you're able to provide whatever we need if we just ask. We thank you for that provision even now. Now, God, bless us moving forward. Bless all that we do. We pray it brings you glory and honor. In the wonderful and blessed name of Jesus to Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. In just a few moments, I do want to have communion with you. There are those in the sanctuary, and you may be at home right now. I'm just going to take a few seconds to allow you, if you want to join with us in this communion, to go to your kitchen, get a cracker, some bread or some water or juice and you can celebrate with us today I'll give you just a moment if you want to do that give you get you a cracker or some bread some juice or some water and you can celebrate with us amen The scripture reads in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Before we take this holy sacrament, I want to just say to you that what we are getting ready to do is in remembrance of what Christ has done for us. Again, God offered Jesus Christ, his son, as a living sacrifice for our sin, and he died on a cross, shed his blood, took the punishment for us. Because we all deserve punishment because of our sin. But thank God that Jesus took the punishment for us. His body beaten and bruised for us. As the preacher said, his nails, the hands were nailed to a cross, the feet nailed, and the spear pierced his side, and he had a crown of thorns on his head. But yet, he didn't say a complaining word. He did that for us. He gave his body for us. His blood was shed for the remission of sin. That if we just confess that we have sinned, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the gift that we have through Jesus Christ. Let us pray, God, thank you for this bread and for this cup. Thank you for what it represents. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for us, for allowing your body to be broken and your blood to be shed. We pray, oh God, that you will forgive us now of our sin, cleanse us from the unrighteousness in our heart, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And Lord, if we hold grudges against somebody, help us to know now that we need to go offer forgiveness that we need to make the situation right. No matter what we have inside of us, God, cleanse us from it if it's not of you. And help us to continue to look to the cross from where our help comes from. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us take the bread. Eat you all of it. Let us take the cup. Drink you all of it. And the body of believers said amen and amen. As we come to a close in our worship experience today, I do want to again thank you for your continued support of our ministry, both through your prayers and through your finance. In just a few moments, you're going to see coming across the screen the ways that you can continue to support us in our giving, the way that you can support us in your prayers. And then if you desire membership, there is a way that you can request membership. It will come across the screen at the end of our service today. But let me just go ahead and highlight what you're about to see. Listen, you can give to us either by mail or online. You can ask for membership through our website or through an email. Or even right now on the chat, if you desire to be a member of our church, if you desire to be saved, you can put it in the chat. Um, right now and we'll reach out to you and connect with you amen i just want to say to you today that we appreciate all that you have done and we ask that if you would the lord lead you and if your lord is willing that you will join us again here next week we thank you again and we pray god's blessings upon you from this day forth and forevermore amen have a great rest of your week, and be safe, and hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen.